Let's get this cranking out this morning, morning, morning. Let's go. Let's do this. It is a beautiful Saturday morning, and let's get some things rocking and rolling, and yeah, hang out. <laughs> bring your popcorn, bring your soup. Let's have some fun. Let's talk about it. Talk about some things. Once you get finished, you're an old man. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Man, I have been dealing with some work this past week, and it has been a great thing. Just, oh, man, it's so good. Just to sit down for a little while and hang out, see Popsoon, and just get it get it cracking. Which is not the thing with this past Friday that I had. Sorry, Gina. How's it going, Melissa? Hi, good morning. I was just speaking to uh, Sharon about you. She said that you came in one of the rooms one time, and uh, she said, get his information. We're, yeah. trying to, we're trying to embark on this uh, Florida situation at when, mm. when they need the help. It's not going to be right now as far as the housing, but we're trying to zero in on a couple... Uh, areas that may need the tiny homes and stuff like that so that's kind of funny that you came up this morning how are you doing i'm doing good actually and that's uh, ironic too because i'm over here my wife and i are about to go travel and i just decided to throw the room up and i'm just like eh, why not you know and so, uh yeah i actually we're working on a project what's up noel and you uh, Juju, how's it going? And so I'm um, one of the coolest things. Actually, I'm working on a project right now in the planning phase there in um, in Florida. And um, my building, uh, my build team actually specializes in emergency relief and disaster or emergency response and disaster relief. Exactly. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we actually we um, we w so we took that we took that experience and put it into the public side of stuff. Mm -hmm. And man, you talk about being able to uh, build out different. Um, build out different units and stuff and if you could mute your mic for a second the background noise is kind of a uh, kind of loud thank you but um but that's where with the uh, like holding costs and a bunch of other stuff so we're um and guys as you're jumping in share it out really quick this is like an absolute spontaneous room i did not have any planning into it with this this morning but uh but with the within florida what we're doing i mean even just then we're doing a double wide unit it's going to be Probably gonna, we're going to start out with six units on the property. It's got some wetland um, put components to the property. But what we're doing is we're going to use helical pads and be able to, for the foundation, which is, you know, very, very strong. And it's they don't have the cure time. It's like for concrete. But um, but we're using the helical pads or helical piles, sorry, not pads. Um, yeah, instead of the concrete pads. And that's where uh, right now with when it comes down to uh, the speed of laying the foundation, we can get a, a the foundation and the unit laid down literally the same day. We can actually do those 10 at a, 10 at a time uh, per day, if not within 48 hours. I like to say 48 hours because when I say why 10 per day, people get freaked out. They're like, no way. But <laughs> but, uh, but actually, too, guys, uh, Melissa, you can actually, the link that's up top, um, you guys can actually go through there, check all the boxes that you want for like an ideal unit. And it'll jump over to my calendar. We can just do the brainstorming session. But that's where with like we're doing apartment complexes. We're doing uh, what's up, Ryan and Rod, man. And I'm telling you, we're like apartment complexes, single units, a short term rental uh, business model, corporate housing, um, even two independent living facilities for workforce housing, which is extremely helpful. Um, but that's where we have so many different ways and even the combinations of stuff. Even too, like it's just a matter of. What is the zoning? What's the utilities like? Uh, water, electric, sewers, or septic, you know, depending on where it's at in the rural city. And I'm um, just going through all different layers of it, too. And so it's been, it's absolutely a fantastic. Yeah, that's why I'm, uh, I'm just really grateful. I just threw up the room out of nowhere. I'm like, hey, let's just see what happens. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Melissa, there's a lot of that we can do, and especially in uh, what part of Florida is the project in? 
Uh, we're not really sure yet. I just was in a room yesterday with Doug and then um, a couple me. other people. And uh, she hasn't zoned in on the areas yet. Or actually, she did. I wrote them down. But it's uh, it's the hard-hit areas. I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with the whole Florida area. But she lives there. And okay. she pinged us in. So, I mean, we're talking about healing, the whole thing. You know, the counseling. That's what our group wants to do. Get in there and just have um, short-term housing, you know, for the people yeah. that are displaced. And, you know, the counseling, maybe maybe a house full of clothes so people can come and, you know, gosh, we're lost. You know, when people get, there's Sharon. She can come in and speak a little bit because she okay. knows a lot as well. But, yeah, this is a great idea on all, it's a win-win, right? I mean, yes. it's, it's not just about, it's about helping them. And, man, they're just, it's disaster. So, good deal. Well well, and that's where, you know, my, and that's something too, I have a huge passion for mental health and not oriented, I just developments regardless. Cause my little bit about my story, my dad was murdered when I was 18 and it's been a cold case for over 11 years. And, um, and I, you know, I say that from a place of healing, not as what was me, um, you know, prior to his murder was actually, I contemplated suicide when I was 16 parents divorced when I was 10 and I'm the oldest of three. And we actually had an opportunity to repair our relationship before he was gone and part of where you know that because he had a tree business for 20 years and i grew up in the trades i worked with him since i was 11 and that's where i cut my teeth and learned a lot uh learned a lot of good and a lot of bad reverse engineered the bad as you as we all know to do and um part of where when it comes down to um unpacking uh grief and regret and that's part of what i've done over behind the scenes and working with business owners uh, to help them keep their head in the game. And so when it comes down to developments, because I'm a product of an ILF, um, an independent living facility. Um, but I say that because it was the in direct relation to the flight plan and the, the council that was there at that time. And it's one crazy story in itself. But when it comes down to people hurting, like that is my mission. You know, affordable housing is the is the bedrock of what, what I do. And But also too, you know, fast luxury builds. But when it comes down to those who are displaced, those who need the counseling, those who like, I mean, designing independent living facilities from um, container homes is, a, is a, such a, a, it's one of my favorite things to do. Because when it comes to laying out, like you talked about, like a clothes, uh, clothes pantry or a, you know, trade center or to teach people a trade, even to like an internet cafe and above ground pool, you know, just different cool things that can create a community. You know, even too, because especially with the helical uh, piles, those are very, very strong. They're like eight foot in the ground and like uh, over like a uh, foot, and it's foot and a half to two foot in diameter. And so they don't, those are things don't play. And so... And that's where even too with the foundation uh, for the county ordinances, even if they uh, require you know concrete pads or J bolts, uh, we can absolutely make those accommodations. And and that's where yeah, you know, it's just a matter of how we lay it out and have a great time with it because it's all of, you know regardless of what business model it is, especially for disaster relief, right? And even too for um, for misplaced um, families, you, know, you got to think about the experience. You know, Ryan's down there in the audience, and anybody who wants to come up on stage and shoot an invite. It's, you know, I'm not like going to try and keep people down as far as just listening only, because um, these rooms I like to I like to have engagement. I don't like to have like, a classroom style. Um, that stuff gets boring for me really quick. And <laughs> just being honest, but that's where like being able to um, being able to configure all the way back from like what do we want to what do we want people to experience when they come on property? Right. And, you know, like right now that, um, that, uh, that, that, um, that project we're working on, cause we'll do project we're working on. We're uh, working on the renderings right now. We'll do 2d, 3d and 4d renderings. So that way the County can actually do approvals. And my bill team is actually bringing on virtual reality experiences, which is going to be amazing. Um, but we're working with the federal municipalities and local municipalities actually right now. I think we're in conversations with DeSantis to come down and to, um, to get the units down to um, Florida, uh, whether it's, you know, um, storage or even if it's like, you know, four rooms per like 40 foot container just to have a room, right? Something that's there um, or even three or so, whatever the case is, and, you know, have a bathhouse and, you know, and be able to have those different types of units there, like, you know, porta potty type of uh, type of layout. So it's that way it's really quick, you know, and coming in on wheels and, yeah, just whatever the case is and we've got stuff for vertical like for farming and a bunch of other cool stuff as well and so it's yeah it's all about like what do you want to see come to pass and how can we you know because we've got find funding and financing all lined up for whatever the case is but usually when you're doing stuff with disaster relief there's grants there so that's kind of pretty much taken care of 
And um, but that's where it's you know being able to invest in the stuff that for yourself for long term as well. It's just hey, we can get so creative with it. And I can ramble all day. <laughs> hey Sharon, how's it going? Hey, you do? How's it going, man? Hey, how's it going? But Melissa, um, hopefully that kind of helps kind of paint the picture of what we what can be done because there's no limitation to it. We just have to look at the county ordinances and uh, and go from there because that's uh, that's really the only thing that's holding it back. You know, because here's the thing: like, say for instance, you know, you want to do an independent living facility that's there in the middle of disaster relief, just in case something else happens. Um, we can lay the foundation of the unit of a actual like two bedroom unit, one bath, two bedroom, one bath unit right there, ten per day, foundation and unit, boom, 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 boom all the way through. I love uh, it. Square footage on uh, on those units. One more time, Juju. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What's the square footage on those units? Uh, three hundred twenty square foot for a forty foot high cube, and we can always, you know, we can do creative stuff with, you know, like slapping two of them together for like a double wide, or we've got three together. We've got, we have an Atlas model as well. So it's a multifamily unit. Uh, that could be like a three bedroom, two bath type of deal layout. I mean, we can literally customize anything in there. Um, but we, we have uh, one model that's on wheels that with a solar um, solar uh, off grid option that's attached to it. And uh, hey, Muriel, thanks for coming in. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been overcoming some strep and some other ugh, these past uh, week and a half. It's been, whoo, well, I want to say hell on earth, but that ain't even close, but it feels like it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the square footage can, you know, for one unit is 320 square foot, but we can do 20, 20 footers too, which is, you know, 100, 170 square foot. But the wild part, it's not even about the square footage, it's how you maximize the square footage, you know, the usage of space. And what's amazing when people step inside of a unit, they are blown away at how spacious it feels. And that's what's so cool about it. Because normally what the standard unit would come with like one bedroom, um, you know, full bath, you know, shower, you know, toilet and all that sink and all that jazz. We can put a Jack and Jill sink in there too. Um, you know, big old bedroom where you sleep two or three folks. And even two, um, you've got a gorgeous lounge area. And yeah, I mean, we got one project right now that we're doing full on Pella windows all the way around it. And I mean, beautiful, like open natural light and on the luxury side of it. And so we're even doing single family. We're doing even single friggin' family homes, man. Like it's just amazing, especially for, you know, fast turnaround time, you know, uh, especially with those who are struggling with labor, labor issues right now. Whew, we all know that's an issue. And so, um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. What's up, Mr. Jeremy? How you doing, buddy? Doing good, Rod, man. I am recovering from some ickiness, man. That's why I haven't uh, responded back to your email. I apologize, man. It's no, been, no, no, uh, no worries. No worries, man. No worries. No worries. We're all good. No worries. <laughs> um, cool, man. We don't, we don't have to talk about that at all for me. <laughs> I'm just moving forward, man. <laughs> I was, uh, I noticed that these tiny homes, man, are, are really nice, um, pretty solid as far as their foundation and stuff like that, too, from what I've seen. Um, I'm actually trying to get in, wanting to get into these mobile homes and stuff like that. Uh, while I'm getting into the mobile homes <clears throat> and, uh, I, there's a mobile, there's a, a tiny homes, uh, I don't know if you are call it park yeah. or subdivision or what you would actually call that thing is right across from the mobile home park that I, we have a property in at the moment and um, I'm yeah. going over there. Email me that property, property if you get under contract because that right there will, oh boy, that's a lot. We got fun with that, especially with that container. It'll be like a modular home community, I guess is the technical term for it. That's right across the street, man. That'll, that thing will, mm, that'll be fun. I didn't mean to catch you off. Sorry. I get excited whenever we hear about that. <laughs> nah, no worries. I, like I said, I just went over there and looked at them once and, um, you know, they just look really, really solid. Um, of course, yeah, you're talking about a lot of uh, structures or construction of how you can actually have a open windows and stuff like that or whatever's going on. They're, they're fascinating to me, uh, especially more so the fact that they're, uh, they're so solid on the inside and the flooring and stuff like that to me. Uh, and they even have like a more of a pitch um, roofing and yep. stuff like that as well. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't really know a whole lot about them. But the time that I looked at them, they, they seemed really fascinating to me. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of share some of that, man. And uh, like I said, we're doing a property right across the, right across from the street from there. Heck yeah. Well, and that's where, you know, even too, kind of going back to what, uh, what Melissa was um, and Sharon were um, that are involved with in Florida, man, they're hurricane proof. They'll withstand 150 mile an hour winds, just to be very clear on that. 
you know, and as we're, um, you know, being able to, being able to, you know, stack them, you know, if you go three high, you definitely want to go double wide on that. So that way you have structural integrity with it. Um, but you know, there's so many things that can be done that is just crazy, crazy, but really quick room reset for all the whopping a million people that are in here. You guys, we were just talking about tiny homes are just brainstorming on that. So I'd love to go around the room, starting with Melissa, Sharon, Juju, Rod, then Ryan, um, you want that order, introduce yourself and, you know, just share with the room what, what y'all do and let's just have some fun just networking this morning. Melissa, I'm going to pass the mic to you. Hi there, Melissa Boosie here. I'm, uh. Investor, realtor, I care about people, and we want to embark on some tiny homes for the disaster in Florida. And we've created a little special team. And um, I had my notes, guys, but um, I apologize. I'm making breakfast, and they're not at my reach. So, um, yes, we're looking forward to this. And you had some great information this morning. It was kind of God sent me to this room this morning. So. Nice talking to you all. I'm going to pass it over to Sharon because she's she's Mama Bear. Go ahead, Sharon. Good morning. I'm in a place where it's too much background noise, so I'm, I came to the stage. You're actually fine. I can hear you just fine. Yeah, but I have them being quiet right now. Oh, behind gotcha. me. <laughs> um, see, she's calling me Mama Bear. Um, anyway, we're very much interested. Um, Melissa is a collaboration, so I would like the details of your tiny houses. I think is another person that had presented them, but um, definitely would be helping a lot of people in distress and having having the need to get some transitional housing as well as short term to long term. Right now, understood. Mr. Juju, over to you, my good sir. Going once. There we go. Hey, how you, how you doing, man? Yeah, I actually had somebody come in our room yesterday and talk about uh, transitional housing and uh, the, the funding for it and stuff. And uh, tiny homes are like, they've always been extremely interesting to me just as far as like, you know, how to like, you know, you know how, I think it makes such a small space seem so, you know, big. But um, I was wondering how how does the funding aspect of it work? Like when you're looking at like like if I purchase just a property, right? And I'm just trying to like I want to get a tiny home put on there. You know, I, I see banks don't really like to package like you know building a home on the land so much as as much as they like you know just packaging like a home that's already there. I'll circle back to that question. Just bookmark it really quick. We're gonna bounce ba the uh, mic over to Rod and then Ryan. Hello, everybody, and yeah, thank you for allowing me to come to the stage, Jeremy. Uh, my name is Rod Moore out of uh, Anderson, South Carolina, um, uh, uh, real estate investor, uh, wholesaler. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just in that space. Uh, I do some plumbing and irrigation and stuff like that, too, as well, um, and just transitioning from the, the plumbing and irrigation into the uh, market of uh, real estate more than anything. So. Yeah, that's the gist of me. I'm, my name's Rod, again, uh, out of uh, Anderson, South Carolina. I'll pass it on to Ryan. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to see you, Jeremy. Uh, my name's Ryan Dodson, and uh, uh, our firm basically uh, helps you take the mystery out of the real estate investing game. Uh, we help build communities one door at a time. We help you find the deal, get the deal, and fund the deal. So, um been in the real estate space, the investing space since 2018, and uh, just here to learn and uh, here to help in any way that I can. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Juju, what, let me ask you this really quick. Was it the Forstons that were in there talking about the transitional housing? I'm sorry, I didn't get the uh, last part of what you said. That was uh, Derek Forston and Otis Forston. Were those the ones that were jumping in there about, or was it Tanisha? Who was it uh, that jumped in talking about the affordable housing or transitional housing? That was uh, Tanisha. She had... Okay, cool. Tanisha is awesome, man. And that's where, um, you know, so we're working on a uh, workforce housing development. It's going to be a an apartment complex style build. And so it, when it comes down to the financing of it, I mean, there's tons and tons of companies that are out there. I have Tiny Home Funding LLC also. 
And so I work with over 120 lenders uh, on just different facets. And so whether it's on the, um, you know, getting it to go vertical, going to where we have, um, where we have even to refinancing on modular home communities as well. Um, that's why I got really excited about when Rod brought up the neighborhood of the uh, tiny homes, because part of where, because um, it, it'll operate as a chattel loan or as a um, as a uh, conventional or construction loan, depending on the status of the project, who's involved. And that's why it's a, it's a kind of a wild, wild west to a degree. But when it comes down to uh, when it comes down to those who are the lending institutions or just even to just for those who are the providers, um, whether they could be hard money, whatever, whatever the case is, you know, it, it could be literally all the way up to, I mean, we've got lenders in place that will do it as a new construction that will also do it as a, um, you know, just do it as a, a well, um, new construction or ground up construction um, or a conventional loan. And we've got uh, lenders in place that'll help with, let's see. Oh yeah. Good question, Sharon. And so with the, uh, with the loan uh, structure of it, it really depends on the property and it too, you know, of course with utilities, what does that include? Like, what is that, how does that, you know, incorporate into everything and um, being able to really, um, line out exactly where the uh, where the utilities are going to be mapped out to. So um, being able to being able to have it all those different variables into there uh, was where we can structure it more than likely to a conventional or construction loan. Um, but we've also got channel loans depending on if it's a uh, mobile home park or what what it just it just depends. Uh, so there's lenders that where we can we can even do it to where it's an RV asset. Uh, because with it being on wheels, um, you know, being able to have it in that category of asset, it's a, it opens up for you know campground. Uh, campgrounds and mobile home park financing because with the uh, tiny homes with the container homes it's just a unit so with it being on concrete beams or you know kind of cinder blocks whatever the case is it all just depends on that property but it is definitely doable and it happens every day and um does that help answer your question yeah i really appreciate that thanks man. you got it and Miss Sharon, um, so the projected time uh, was asked for the room. What's the projected time to building finalize uh, tiny home completion ready for move-in cycle? <clears throat> Depends on the project too. But say for one unit, I mean we're we're building ten units per week, and so when it comes down to um, when it comes down to your project, it's just really um, you know financing on that side will sometimes it'll take depending on how small or large the project is can take a couple of weeks or so. But once the um, the um, funding is approved and clears. Then I mean we're you know we're building you know ten per week and with the foundation with using helical uh, piles we can have that down and like have a unit done and within you know two weeks max right and then have it delivered with it being installed there on the site <coughs> excuse me there on the site um, within the same day. And so. Are you saying two weeks or three weeks? I will just say we'll just say three weeks. We'll just say a month. You know, you know, a month to be there on site installed, and you know, with it being, yeah, you know, yeah, it's just a matter of the county approval. Sometimes it'll drag their feet, but um, but yeah, we'll be able to we'll be able to have that. You know, with it once the once the build time starts, with it being on ground ready, it'll be two three weeks max. I like to be generous on that time, so when we're early, it makes it even that much better. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, and. And that even goes back to your model too. Yeah, if you're wanting to have like say you know ten units that are double wide, um, you yeah, know we'll do you know with uh, two uh, it'll be two units, and so we'll crank out those in uh, two weeks, and then have them installed that following week. You know, it just depends on delivery time, and of course logistics wise, making sure that you know coordinating with a GC or you know a GC or even an electric uh, electrician or a plumber, um, just to do the tie-ins, and that you'll get a VIN number with each unit, so it'll pass the normal deed process. Well, thank you um, for telling me that. You're welcome. What's going on, John? Introduce yourself to the room, my good sir. And I need to call you back. I've been uh, uh, earlier in the room. I was saying I've been still over, uh, uh, overcoming right. that, that crud from this week. <laughs> Plug, what's happening? Um, yeah, no, I love the conversation. And uh, I'm a real estate agent in Coronado, uh, San Diego area, San Diego County. Uh, we've talked about some bigger deals, but I, it's just coincidentally, I was with a guy who's uh, active duty uh, uh, Navy SEAL, and uh, he's getting ready to retire, and he just hit me up for some options. They talked about doing tiny homes, uh, maybe, you know, mobile homes, 
uh, manufactured, I guess they call them now. But, you know, back in the day when they did come with wheels on them, um, they were talking about, you know, if you take the wheels off and you attach it to the ground and it becomes an attached asset. So for lending purposes, and then if you remove it from the ground without permission or whatever, uh, it's a violation of the loan covenant, right? So I just thought I'd bring up that that uh, idea or that question, maybe um, any comments on that? And because like normally I should have started off like when I think a tiny home, I think more of a of a fifth wheel uh or a more elaborate trailer uh and that stuff is really regulated by ANSI specs rather than by HUD or whatever you call it for for uh home building code so that's a little more relaxed standard ANSI because it's mobile uh any comments along those lines and and how to dis differentiate those and then maybe help my client he's going to sell the family farm and he'll end up with about two million uh and he's going to take that and try and do something where i'm going to try and persuade him to do you know his own establishment and maybe there's a property management component and then he might have you know 10 20 or 30 tiny homes you know tennessee north carolina who knows and then try and have this as an ongoing business that feeds them cash flow wise i uh, hope that's not too much of a complicated uh, question Thanks. I was about to ask you, what is the question? Because what you did say is factual, because when it comes to the loan, um, you have to keep it in an asset class, you know, especially if it's it, you know, being, because with it being on a, a, a trailer, you know, each container is going to be 20,000 pounds, right? And so you have to definitely keep it in that asset class. Um, and also, too, if you're planning to take it off the wheels, and that's something that is very, that is not talked about a lot. And I appreciate you bringing that up because a lot of times people get great ideas, but they also forget about their due diligence on the back end um, so with um, just to make sure i'm tracking um with the what was the scenario again one more time john well just that you know he's trying to come up with ideas he and his wife that once they sell the family farm and have the proceeds what can he buy acreage wise maybe at least two acres might be bigger uh maybe sound small if you're going to do multiple tiny homes but I think the lowest cost, this is really where I was going. Do you think that tiny homes would be the least cost and perhaps the best cash flow scenario for a retired military guy who's got, he'll have his military pension, but, you know, um, rather than trying to do it as a manufactured home park or something like that, that I would say is the next step up in terms of capital investment and uh, you know, highest and best use in the sense that you'd have more units, more tiny homes than you would have manufactured homes. Let's ask that question, I guess. Yeah. And so, and so I'll just give you a scenario. I toured 200 acres um, here in Alabama uh, two days ago. And so the plan is if the deal goes through, um, yeah, we're going to be doing a short term rental. And so the whole entire concept behind, you know, the, the, so the container homes are definitely going to be the fastest, you know, turnaround time and depending on the land too. Right. And so with where he's at, you know, where I'm at here in Alabama, we've got a, um, and we've got a, a literal county that has zero like restrictions on zoning, which is a freaking gold mine. And so part of, um, you know, any kind of land in that area, this is just a really good plot. Uh, and so there's uh, there's 130 acres that are of that that are uh, tillable land, right? And then what we're going to do yeah. that actual that crop contract is actually up this month. And so the plan behind it is, you know, because there's no there's no utilities all extended out through the uh, to, throughout the farmland, understandably. But um, but the holding cost, right? Yeah, you know, this is what um, you know Ryan and I were talking about the other day. And you know, one of the biggest things is the holding cost on trying to develop something. And when it comes down to the fastest turnaround time, you got to think about pre-booking, right? Yeah, if you're going short-term rental or corporate housing, um, depends on what the uh, what the zoning allowances will will permit you to build. Um, but and that'll dictate a lot of the direction on it. However, uh, rezoning is always an option, but you got to look at you know the comparative cost on that. But part of the part of the biggest thing is you got to think about how are you going to cash flow, right? How are you going to cash flow it while it's being built? You know, while you're doing development, because that's where uh, that's where it comes in real handy to be able to say, OK, we're going to do this development. Let's get renderings with it. And as part of what my team's doing with that pro pro um, project down in Florida and in Texas, uh, we're doing some really sick renderings. Ryan, Ryan saw some of the renderings the other day and he'll tell you, man, they're like 
they're pretty and they're pretty well in detail uh, and exactly where and what goes where uh, and and so being able to uh, being able to have a business plan in place just not just the infrastructure is very key and, and that's where um, and that's part of what my team loves I love that my team can crank out the renderings really quick uh, but also too when while put, putting a business model together to say okay we're gonna market this bad boy while it's being built so this way he has cash flow that person has cash flow right away before or well has pre-booked money coming in when the units land people move in and then that will spring launch the entire the springboard forward the entire marketing plan um, with user generated content right out the gate making our lives a whole lot easier right and um and and being able to really help him out with that because the thing is for him is me having two million liquid on that i would dedicate probably quarter million to or like land uh, getting it developed if that's possible and so that way within there you can even to use it to where you're uh, using some of that, those funds for the landscaping uh, depending on where the utility is going to be uh, extended out to or in my you know installed and so that way you can measure out those costs and look at exactly of course i'm sorry not a quarter million is a figure but um there's an example but being able to section that out and look at how many units can we put on there per the acreage and be able to make sure that you know for you know for the spacing and this all goes into the experience of what you want to create i mean we're i'm working with folks who are putting together you know, hunting resorts right and you definitely don't want to put them on the, you know any kind of close where the hunting ground is going to be at because you want people to shoot in the other direction <laughs> <laughs> even though these are made of metal man sometimes bullets can go through but um you know hunting lodges and even to short-term rental outdoor retreats right and so how can we include the nature into that experience and make that really really awesome you know, I've got over you know over ten years in landscaping, um, and so for me, when it comes to creating these types of experiences for people, I like to include everything, consider everything, and look at what can be an asset and how can we how can we approach it that way. Because that all of that being said goes right into what people are going to be paying for, right? And so if he's got two million liquid, and then what we uh, you could easily do is you know buy you know maybe two to five acres or something just in that area. And look at you know long term thinking like uh, thinking backwards, reverse engineering it to the first step, and saying how can we um, how can we create the best experience in this area that's going to make sense for the area, uh, but also too even if it's you know an uh, like abstract for the area, it could be a getaway, a retreat. Yeah, you know, I think about you know how are you going like depending on your business model, if it's short term rental, you know corporate housing, however, how are you going to furnish it? Um, how does how would that make sense? And also too you know short term rentals for depending on where that area is at. Uh, could be a great, um, a great, um, you know, a great position for it. To that and then even to, yeah, I mean, he could have one part short-term rental, one part corporate housing for contractors that come in, right? Um, you know, contractors, are traveling executives, traveling nurses, um, anybody who's coming into town that could want needs to stay there for three months. Um, yeah, that's another option as well. So that way, it not only self-funds it itself, but also you have the anchoring um, of the corporate housing because those corporations will buy the the contract yearly. And that way you have steady income because short-term rentals can be, you know, it's great, but also it has its own ebbs and flows, just like anything. <laughs> so um, does that help answer your question? Kind of like, um, yeah. kind of like, okay, cool. Well, as soon as you mentioned uh, hunting, like hunting uh, encampments or whatever, I had to do a PTR and you'll see the uh, called redneck high rise, right? Um, oh yeah. The, the stackable, the stackable manufactured homes. It's really hilarious. So you can put them on scaffolding and you can position them. Did you see the PTR? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. This looks, I don't know why, but this looks like a favela in Colombia. Um, and we definitely will make it to where it's, you know, it's not redneck wonder, uh, but we definitely want to make sure it looks a little bit cleaner than that. But that is definitely one, um, that is absolutely one application to it. Um, are those, those are trailer homes on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. They got trailers and they got scaffolding and they've got, <laughs> some anchoring going on they have different views uh i'm about you know, to say this looks like containers i'm like holy crap those are trailers <laughs> yeah 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 you just get a crane or a forklift to put them up on those little perches it's kind of cool yeah. <laughs> maybe out here in california where you have earthquakes it wouldn't be quite as as easy but uh got to bring a little levity to the discussion um that no, is definitely me, entertaining <laughs> yeah you gave me uh uh jeremy a really great um uh what would i say profile business profile business plan the distinction between the tiny houses um 
And I, I think in our last conversation, I heard that state of California is going to perhaps start to recognize ADUs as, I'm sorry, tiny houses as ADUs. Oh yeah. That's been the Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, we've got several to... projects and in... oh, go ahead. Sorry. Let me catch up. Oh no, no. I just was going to say, I happened to meet the guy who's, um, who's a developer who came up with the ADU concept and went to Sacramento and helped him write the legislation with one of the uh, congressmen uh, or senators and and uh, got it put into law. And of course, they were excited to try and get uh, more density in California. A lot of people are offended by increased density, but we, we have a lot of vacant land that's that it's just not zoned. Like you said, it's not zoned for that. And to try and go in and change the master plan is is uh, very difficult, very challenging. But um, yeah, you helped me conceptualize uh, where I need to counsel this uh, this veteran and his family on on what the options might be, and then I'll I'll contact you in the back channel and and see maybe if we could uh, help this guy out because um, you know it's the lack of knowledge that that people just don't have, and and I, I have a, a special place in my heart for guys who served our country and we're trying to get them affordable housing and think about all the other veterans yep. who are on limited income that need the same well, help and, and they can either the, be in a tiny home or, or be a homeowner within a park or whatever. So there you go. Thanks. When that, and that's what's so crazy is that HUD bash is like HUD for the vets. And I'm so serious with that. You know, and that's uh, what's up, David, Remy, Jeremy. What's going on, guys? Should we have should we again? I believe September. The, uh, the, that's their name, I believe, but um, or their name. But one of the biggest things for HUD Vash is the transitional living and workforce housing for the homeless vets because that's one of the biggest. Like that's you know, I've I've done mission work overseas, and you know, I've I love that we have you know other. So here's the thing: like, I love mission work. You know, I was a missionary for, for a year over in South America full time. And, you know, part of what, what breaks my heart, and this is actually goes right back into, um, you know, nonprofits. And I, I appreciate because I'm involved in projects over in Uyo State, Nigeria, and some other places too. And when I, I mean, I have a heart for those who are hurting, period. But when our home backyard is neglected for overseas, that's where we, we need to balance certain things. But, you know, I say that with all, you know, um, you have to balance and clean it up. Is that, you know, like part of my project over in Nigeria is to help create an industry and, a, yeah. um, and we're actually going to be putting in a, um, a circular eco city ecosystem, you know, uh, taking waste management to create building materials and actually help with, you know, creating affordable housing over there, sustainable housing, big time. But that's where here in the backyard, there's a lot of nonprofits that have, um, that have, you know, that have the funds that, you know, being able to repurpose uh, mission funds over into our own backyard to help our own homeless here in town. Because, you know, one of the, yeah, that's, old, that, that's that old saying, you know, our number one favor that we can do for other people is work on ourselves. And part of the, um, you know, part of the, you know, part of our own backyard is, you know, being able to help those who need it right now. And the man, the vets, man, they've, they laid their life down. They really did. And, you know, one of the one of the hardest things to see is that people suffering while other people are, you know, caring for other things. And like when I was uh, overseas, and that's why when you do things overseas, sometimes it doesn't stick. And let's just be honest, because at the end of the day, when it comes to helping you know, helping communities overseas, anyone that's overseas, you have to have boots on the ground. Roots and it roots there to help with sustainable sustainability, and that's just a cold hard fact of it. And and that's where when it comes down to you know, you know, leveraging hot bash. I mean, imagine imagine being able to you know, here's a here's a really cool play, John. Is that and I, and I gave this idea to somebody else who, uh, and if I said their name, most folks would probably know it in the room. Uh, but I gave this idea to somebody, and they uh, they're like, so what do I need you for? I was like, well, I mean, you're welcome, <laughs> but. Hey, you know, and, and that's where on the building side is where we'll come and play there. But um, imagine being able to have, you know, being able to put together a whole entire real estate development that is, you know, paid for by private money, then back like, or even too funded by HUD Bash. Because um, HUD Bash will fund you know, pretty much everything. And they're sitting on land right now that they need a person who's got the vision, the gumption, and the grit, um, and also the business plan. You got to check all the boxes before you get approved. But biggest thing is, as far as as far as that, they'll fund the whole project and be able to help you, like be able to bring in those who are going to rent, because they'll get vouchers, et cetera, just like Section Eight and other things. Of course, there's different terminology with it, but uh, but 
it comes down to being able to erect the entire thing built up. Then guess what? Someone else can come in and purchase it from you with it being funded by HUD VASH and those other programs. And that's where, you know, it's just the infrastructure. Like that's part of like these apartment complexes, you know, like here I'll actually do a PTR with, uh, with mine really fast. And that way you guys can kind of see the, uh, the uh, 3d rendering of a 30 unit uh, apartment complex for, and that was a phone call. Meryl. All right. Go ahead and drop this here. And hang on one second. Man, this PTR does not let me show much at all. All right. There we go. And PTR. But that's where build, being able to build out an apartment complex and be able to grow, you know, and um, be able to, to have, have that filled in with the, you know, with vets, those who are, um, who are really, who need that help. And here's the thing, you know, when it comes down to, um, you have transitional living, workforce housing, and then subsidized rent. Right. And, and that's, I live in Huntsville, Alabama. And so like, I even, I talked to the senior planner of the housing authority and they have a quarter million dollar budget per unit. Unit. Available right now. And, you know, and that's where, like, right now, where I'm working with some nonprofits to put together plans and structure and be able to say, hey, this is how, when you enter in, this is what you're going to see, right? And that's where, you know, I kept going back to with, um, you know, John kind of bringing back what Sharon and Melissa and I were talking about earlier, is that when it, you're able to put together, you're able to put together a whole experience that's not only going to help people enjoy themselves, but also get their dignity back. That's been a complete game changer because I don't know about you, man, but I've gone to a ton of different, you know, like halfway houses and stuff that have uh, that looked like crack houses. And one of the biggest things for me, and I'm sitting back wondering, I'm like, how in God's name can, I mean, first of all, I, I asked myself, you know, the obvious dumb question, like how in the world can this be and how can no one care about it? It goes back to the numbers. But when you're paying 65 k for, you know, a, a container unit that can be built out for one bedroom, have its own kitchen, have its own like, living space, and then have it next to each other, shoot, have it as a motel. Have it classified as a motel or even to have stay on commercial land, which is easy to do. Of course, depending on who you're going to serve, you have to make sure you have like, within restrictions wise as far as who is going to be, um, you know, who is going to be actually, you know, going to be there in the facility. You have to work backwards from that because depending on the grants, et cetera, they may have to be in a certain distance of like schools or, you know, the city or whatever the case is. But man, I kid you not. Like, I mean, shoot, there's a uh, there's a county here, uh, David down here down in the audience. You guys shout out to the Land MBA, and if he stands in the audience, I'm going to what? Who's calling me right now? Hang on one second. Hold on one segundo. Oh, um, how can I help? <laughs> Texting. All right, next. Come back. Um, so one of the biggest things, uh, shout out to uh, David down there, uh, Land MBA. I'm a cinnamon invite to come on stage to uh, shout himself out. And Remy, what's up, man? And all you guys down the audience, just come up on stage, man. Let's just uh, stop being like you guys over here. Just give me the side eye in the classroom, like hey, it's going. But uh, <laughs> so um, and Remy, I swear, if you don't get up here, man, we gonna have some problems. I love you, brother. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of the biggest things, you know, being able to find the land and be able to do what you need to do, man. I mean, you guys, it's, it's so creative what we can do. And it's a matter of being able to, uh, being able to have that right business plan in place and be able to grow. You know, it's, it's got nothing to do with, um, the infrastructure. well, it has a lot to do with the infrastructure, but also to the majority of it is your business plan, who you're going to serve and working backwards from there. And, and that's where, uh, there's so much potential and so much power in, in that, too, because when I was talking to the senior planner of the Housing Authority here in Huntsville, Alabama, because Huntsville, Alabama doesn't play. Like, I don't know if you guys have uh, yelled in your research on Huntsville, Alabama, but, um, man, I kid you not, there is uh, there's a lot of restrictions, especially being an industrial tech city, um, and it's uh, especially with the uh, development, and, and it's, it's crazy how um how how things can uh, be bottlenecked by some of the dumbest things like semantics and we're in verbiage much we all know verbiage is anything if you've done it if you've gone through and gotten kicked in the teeth by anything you know that verbiage is everything but um it goes back into you know keeping it consistent in the business plan keeping it can keep it consistent with the systems um to, uh, to be able to systematize and productize but really quick let's do a really quick on room reset for all eight of us that are in here i think about seven but let's share the program really quick guys and just be able to get some blood folks know that we're talking about this stuff and just down to do a cowboy hat and get in here 
Um, but uh, David and James, if you guys both can un unmike, David first, James second, if you can unmike and just introduce yourself to so everyone that's in the room. Um, and it says to be uh, David Smith. I don't know if this is David's first time promoting yourself on the app, but guys, go ahead and take it away. Hey, thanks for inviting me up. Um, hey, everybody. My name is David Vance Jean Kist. Um, I am a land investor. I, I own a, two companies, one called Mile High Rural Land. The other one is Land MBA. And one is the one that I basically buy and sell rural vacant land. And the other one, I teach people how to do it, Land MBA. Um, very interested in this space, just starting to really learn about it. Because my primarily my primary model has been uh, buying land way below market value and just flipping it. Um, also subdividing it and adding value by subdividing it, but still flipping the raw dirt. Um, and um, but I want to learn how to um, buy and hold some of this land and um, do something with. Uh, tiny home type communities and creating cash flow. Uh, I actually have a property that I'm uh, is going to be my first one to start to develop is uh, in Southern Colorado. Got about 42 acres down there and um, a lot of um, things we can do with that property. So if anybody would like to uh, know more, or learn more about, hey, how do you find land for 20, 30, 40 cents on the dollar, um, hit me up. And you guys, David is the real deal. We had a meeting uh, the other day, and or was it was it a week and a half ago? I think maybe a week Something ago, like that. Yeah, yeah, it's blurring together. But man, it's uh, this guy's a real deal, y'all. Yeah, so I'm gonna pass the mic over to James real quick. <clears throat> yeah, some good morning. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, everyone. Um, great to be here. Great space. Uh, relatively new to uh, real estate, uh, and uh, I am a, a social worker. Um, by training, and I um, also live in the uh, in New York City, and New York City is is an interesting place to be um, currently. And uh, several of the topics that you guys touch upon, I uh, just have my mind spinning. I'm also a, a veteran, also work with uh, Hadvash um, veterans, and uh, also the. Um, just the other day, uh, someone approached me about um, there's a um, arena being built and and looking at um, short term rentals in, in that in that space. Uh, uh, and she has a couple of uh, properties there and there's a uh, current uh, construction going on out there as well. But also um, looking at the um, Opportunity Zone um, space as well um, here in New York um, State, which has um, over 500 um, Opportunity Zones, both in rural and uh, urban and suburban um, communities. And just thinking about just um, um, just available um, um, land that, that may be uh, applicable for uh, tiny homes as well, then New York City is also a yeah, right to shelter state. I mean, um, city, and um, of late, um, uh, Governor Albert um, in Texas has been sending uh, immigrants up here. And at last count, I believe there are about thirteen thousand that has um, uh, arrived. And um, the uh, shelter basically cannot uh, shelter system cannot. Uh, they are overcapacitated right now. Uh, so just uh, uh, you know, a lot of um, interesting things um, that's been discussed, and um, certainly that with, as someone who is um, thinking about this uh, real estate space and and just various options and opportunities this year, even a um, uh, semiconductor company uh, just recently announced also that they are bringing they're going to build a facility out uh, out here uh, in the uh up north so just a whole lot of just options and opportunities you know out there and certainly you know want to learn more and, and just see exactly uh what's um, feasible uh especially for someone who is uh not in the uh real estate space want to step into real uh, uh real estate space um utilizing just a whole stuff uh, other 
tax options and, and available options out there, but willing to learn uh, how to basically uh, move the, the process forward with the, uh, the uh, team that, you know, that um, I'm assembling. So with that, I'll turn the mic back over to you, Jeremy. And David, uh, definitely I'll uh, reach out to you as well. Thank you. I was about to say that exact same thing, James and David. Uh, David, remember when I was telling you about the Opportunity Zone Fund and all that, like OZ, easy, OZ easy and easy do it and all that? Um, James is uh, in the program, I believe. And, um, man, it is just, um, yeah, there's so much opportunity. It's crazy. And so I can't wait for the two of you to connect, man. It's just kind of, uh, <laughs> you'll just both text me when I'll have a meeting and let me know the ideas that just fly off left and right. <laughs> Let's see, we've got Delisha and also Mr. Banks down there. I don't know if that's, uh, that's a, his real name or not, but you guys, man, I am. Let's see, man, I, it's a, this is a great morning. It's been it's been one busy week, and what's so nuts is with uh, just the projects that are going on all over the United States. One of the most encouraging things for me is that you know municipalities and just folks who are really really stepping up on exactly where you know where they acknowledge the problems you know and that's one of the biggest things that's why i'm so adamant on container homes and just anything that when it comes to affordable housing because you know even though you know even though we've got so many different options and alternatives it's you know, when you look at the specs when you look at the numbers when you look at the turnaround times and how you know getting a foundation down i mean imagine having a whole unit rent ready within a week and a half and and being able to you know once the build's done it's there it's arrived it's all checked off and you have people waiting to go in and get the you know get the keys or whatever if you put a, a keypad on it or whatever the case is um and be able to uh and be able to really swing just be able to make it happen and there are uh oh we got a rock star in this house i miss tanisha great big and um and so one of the one of the biggest things to you guys um is just there's it all goes down to your creativity and how can we not only make a difference make a change but also do it in a way that ma the numbers make sense because let's be real you know at the end of the day all of this is um, all of this is cool and all, but at the end of the day, you got to make sure the numbers work because if you don't, what's going to happen is that it's going to it's going to take place to where you're able to um, where you're able to really dig in um, and be at a loss if you're not careful, you know. And you know, having you know having a solid you know um, solid plan in place, like whether it's you know having um, the program giving the programs a heads up that you're going to be that you have a new facility um, in, in in development. And that way they're going to be able to, um, that way they're, I do do, uh, Janisha just jumped in. Um, but um, one of the biggest things is being able to, to say, hey, look, we are going to have this development done. We're going to have it ready to go and be rent ready in the next month and a half and give the the, uh, the, uh, the programs a heads up, you know, and to, you know, when it comes to short term rentals, have a direct, I always say have a direct booking site in place because it's very tempting to just throw it on Airbnb or Verbo or any of the other um, other platforms. But if you don't own your data, what's going to happen is you are not going to know who your customers are. And uh, and so yeah, all of it goes back to you know how do you how do you get ready from the get go from the jump and get everything in place so that way you're not having to be overwhelmed and backtrack and the whole entire project backlogs. You know, peace means to make order. You know, in the Greek and um, and so when it comes down to preparing ahead of time. You're gonna have a whole lot more peace of mind when you're prepared ahead of time instead of having to prepare on the spot. <laughs> Tanisha, if you can, I'd like introduce yourself to everybody in the room. We got some heavy hitters in here, and definitely want you to be able to make yourself known and what in the world that you do. Hey, good morning, Jeremy. How are you? Doing well. Good, good. Well, good morning to everyone, everyone on the platform and everyone in the audience. My name is Miss Tanisha Edwards. Sorry, I'm late. Um, have a fundraiser today. So doing multiple things. However, I am a um, serial entrepreneur. I do own a nonprofit as well um, with the businesses that I do have. And Mr. Jeremy is right. Um, you have to have a plan in place. Um, my plan started years ago, of course, um, as far as opening transitional housing uh, or creating a transitional housing program, as well as working with the state, having lots 
licensed homes. Um, and I also do Airbnbs with my homes as well. So the whole kicker is when you, when Jeremy talks about these tiny homes, they're very well needed. Okay. Um, the population has grew within the communities as far as homelessness goes. So with it, that being said, you have a lot of agencies. Um, you have a lot of shelters that are looking for places um, for these people to go to because number one is they don't have apartments. They can't do apartments. Apartments are too expensive, right? And so you can take these tiny homes homes what mr jeremy is talking about sorry my signal may be going in and out but bear with me you guys um you can take these tiny homes and you can turn them into a community okay and you can build an affordable community within if you got a piece of land now i don't know if some of you guys are real estate investors on here i don't know if some of you have land already in the mix but you can take that land and you can put all these tiny homes there and you can have you don't have to you know go and have a whole six or seven acres you can have two at least three acres and go and put a certain amount of homes sitting there and you can have these to where they're rented out to our aged out population because we have those ones that are aging out from the state you can also rent those out to our veterans they can also be rented out to our women of domestic violence, the ones that have the children. That's the population that's becoming very um, popular now um, and being more homeless on the streets than ever before. And you can also set that up with the agencies in order to make that happen. And when Jeremy talked about making or announcing that that project is becoming available, he's absolutely correct. You can announce it and say, coming soon. This is what I do to all of my mentees that I teach in class in order to open these type of tiny or transitional housing programs and have them looking forward to a community that's coming, you know, that's coming or gonna be opening soon. So the investment of getting these tiny homes it's going to be profitable, okay? And you don't have to go through the state. You don't, you, it's just mainly private pay. And we'll just give you an example. I house over 57 people in my houses, okay? And I have a series of homes, residentials, and I also do mobile homes as well. So not that I'm, you know, I'm looking outside of the box because you can look outside of the box of just not just single family homes. You can also do tiny homes, mobile homes, et cetera, et cetera. The tiny homes are a little bit less expensive. They're not as expensive as the mobile homes are now. We've noticed that there is a jump and an increase in the cost on that. However, you can take that and create these tiny homes into a program, okay? Sitting on the land, you can have a grocery store, you can have a garden. I mean, the sky's the limit. Okay. And that can be profitable as far as you guys opening up a community. This is like you're changing the lifestyle of some people that don't have anywhere to go. But when they come into your community and when you're provides for them to go, that's, that's, that's the benefit. You're making an impact. You're changing their lifestyle. You're giving them something to look forward to. You're giving them hope. Okay. So he's absolutely correct on everything that he's stating. I do a nonprofit as well. With my nonprofit, it pushes services to my people that are house. So that's why we talk about the services are so crucial because you want to not only house them, you want to provide a community that's got additional resources and services that are included. Okay. So that's just a little bit about myself. I own kind of like a whole bunch of things. I have a home health company. I have a Clio lab. I have a, um, we also have Toro fleet. I have a nonprofit. We have the homes that are, that are uh, licensed and as well as the unlicensed homes. And we work with the city. We also work with the state. 
Okay, I sit on the board for all different types of agencies, such as the Veterans Program. I'm a board member for the Texas Veterans Commission, as well as United Way. I sit on the board for the Reentry Program. So yeah, I do a lot. So my bio is just pretty much gives the whole shebang of everything, which I couldn't put everything in my bio. I'm also a commercial loan officer now. So what makes that a benefit on my end is I can go out and get the properties and you can roll these properties with your getting with Mr. Jeremy into your business. So that's a little bit about myself this morning. I didn't want to take up too much time, but that's me. And so I'll yield my mic. Well, and I'm not going to let you just leave off that you work with the, uh, with how many football teams and other companies, like how many organizations, like girl, stop playing. Like she has been so modest. And, and also Tanisha, you need to connect with David um, who's here on the stage. That's all he does is uh, land, <clears throat> land and subdividing and all of that. I don't know if you caught it before you jumped in the room, but man, oh man, oh man, there's just there's a lot of a lot of things that you know with everyone that's on stage that it, it is so powerful, and that's where anyone who's that as ideas are firing off, you guys, you can hit the link at the very top, and that's the uh, application page. Just it's a you just go through and check all the boxes as far as like an ideal unit. And then that way we can just jump on a, a brainstorming call. No, no strings attached, no obligation to do anything. We just literally brainstorm. And um, I'm actually, I've been told that I need to start charging for that here soon. <laughs> so, um, but being able to brainstorm and really flush out what would be a good plan of attack is so daggum key. And, and that's where, man, Tanisha has got so much in the works where y'all, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing to, excuse me for hawking loogies up on the, on the mic, but it's been amazing to see, you know, all the people that are you know in the industry of helping, not just those who are in affordable housing for those who are homeless, but also those, those who are hurting, you know, in general, like for me, like I, my heart is to help ease the pain of those who are, who are going through it because I've been there and, and my own story. And, and that's where for me, like, I want to make it impossible for someone not to be helped. And almost to the point to where if you are ignoring the things after you see the information, it's deliberate because there is zero reason for the, for the things not to be executed. Um, you know, a lot of folks are like, well, I ain't got the money for it. Well, that's called OPM. You know, let's actually find a way to where you stay in the deal and be able to where you're able to really dig in and, and knock it out. Because at the end of the day, well, the way then this may sound cold and harsh, but at the end of the day, um, if you see something and you don't step up, God's showing you something for a reason. And there's a reason why you were seeing it and nobody else. And and that is so important to, rem uh, to remember. And I have to I have to keep that in mind, too. Because a lot of times I get my feelings, I get my emotions and all that. Well, man, I'm just so tired all the time. Well, also, too, so so is everybody else. But there's a lot that is there to, uh, to be to be said when it comes down to what we can do with work, with who we know and what we um, what we have in our in our hands. It's all about being resourceful. And then no one's saying to step outside of like what you're comfortable doing, um, because at the end of the day, we all have our, you know, our, own, uh, our own life and what we need to do and what we can do with what we have in our hands but also too there's it's amazing what can be done when tapping into other people and i mean shoot i've got a deal on my desk right now that we're i mean we're going to bring a whole bunch of housing and short-term rental and corporate housing um to one specific area i, I darn sure don't get the liquid for it but i mean i know someone who does and also too that wants just to be a silent partner well while well, bing bang and it's like, hey, at the end of the day, there's literally nothing stopping you from the person except the person that looks you dead in the dead smack in the face in the mirror every morning. And and it goes back to um, um you know um you know for you know what the scripture says, you know my people perish for lack of knowledge, man. And the more the more that you can understand, and the more that you can connect the dots, I mean, it's just a massive win 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 all the way around. Man, we've got Quentin, we've got Tanya, James, Ashley. Welcome to the room. It's a little bit smaller of a room. But I had zero planning on doing it uh, today. James is back in the room, and uh, but man, it's just it's a sporadic Saturday morning. We're just hanging out, chatting. So, if you guys, I really want y'all to come up on stage. Uh, if you have an idea, a scenario, you want to see if it would work, just let's just throw it out because um, that's what these these rooms are all about. There's no such thing as a dumb question. The only stupid question is the one you don't ask and try to figure out yourself. Um, you know, that's where the old saying is that, uh, you know, the number one life hack is to get a mentor because sooner or later you're going to find out how expensive it was to not have one. <laughs> so, 
Oh man, it's a little thing called stupid tax, you know, and it never, uh, it doesn't take any prisoners whatsoever. So I'm going to shoot you guys an invite to come on stage. You are welcome to, um, just to say no to it. No, no pressure at all. I just like to have conversation going uh, because I like to, you know, if I'm the one talking the majority of the time, I get bored. You know, it's, uh, I talk to myself plenty of times throughout the day. And so it is all gravy. And so you guys come up on stage. James, what's up, man? Yeah. Hey, Jeremy, is it, um, could um, tiny holes be uh, converted into um, uh, dorms, college dorms? I mean, yeah, we can easily, you can easily do those. It just depends on how you want to structure the dorms. Um, yeah, because you got to think about dorms is pretty much an apartment complex. You know, it's just, you know, relabeled into dorms. But dorms are usually when you have um, two people in one room. And I mean, pfft, I mean, shoot, we could easily do that. But even what's even more interesting is that even making the dorm experience more luxurious with a single container um you know have their own bathroom and everything in there um but even to add to we we actually designed things where we've had um uh, four bedrooms in one unit uh for an rv model and i had those bad boys on wheels and you know loft style um you know one thing which is actually makes it fantastic and that actually may work really well we actually added a solar um solar um uh um, solar attachment to it with a basset system uh, with a switch so that way it has the option to go in between utilities or even to when you know say the power shuts down whoop, switch it on you're good to go um, but yeah the dorms are super easy it's just a matter of the space and you know, being able to design that and then that way you can just have them built out and stacked on top of each other if you want to to increase density um, so you got maybe three or four acres or so and you want to build out a whole complex um, we can design it to where there's two bedrooms in there on each side and have a bathroom a kitchenette in there a lo- smaller lounge area do the square footage on it that's that's easy done we do that weekly well the, the reason why i asked is because um, there's a, a local college uh that has uh, an interest in um in building um student um dorms uh and they have the available land to do so you know as well and uh because all the students and as well as faculty you know commute uh, back and forth and um, and so uh while um you know you were speaking um you know the uh i remember you know and as a matter of fact uh, on wednesday i'll be uh, attending a uh a, a breakfast um with the, uh, the president um and and others um you know on campus and so just wanted to uh, plug that in thanks oh absolutely and that's just yeah that's easy student housing you know, that's the you know, apartment complex can be used for workforce housing, corporate housing, student housing, all of that. And Remy, I'm trying to get you up on stage. To the stage. It's, I accepted the invite and it's not letting me. I don't know what's going on, man. Um, oh, there you go. Here, try now. Let's see if it works. So true. Hey, are you guys seeing Remy up on stage? Because I'm trying to, I've sent him like four invites and <laughs> that's not letting me, that's not registering him come up Negative. on stage. So we're right. Uh, negative. I don't. I don't see him up here. That's so weird. Hey, Remy, try to jump back out and jump back in. That's. I was trying to get you up on stage earlier. The clubhouse is acting weird. A little glitch. That is so interesting. Um, there we go. Let's see. I have no idea what's going on with it. He's acting a little funny. We'll see if it comes back in, but yeah, the um, this the infrastructure can be used for student housing. Um, it can be used for just so many different things, man. And that's where I mean, that's even too on the financing side. It'll be registered as um, student housing, and um, and that's what's so crazy about it. Um, see you later, David. But um, but yeah, man, it's where yeah, you guys hit up David for like for the land. All right, let's do right now. Let's see what we got, Remy. Come on, why is it not bringing you up? That's so weird. Because I have sent you like 15 invites. I'm going to try and send you another one. Five, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I'm trying. I just sent you like six invites, man. I don't know what's going on with Clubhouse. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. No, man. I, yeah, I've just sent you. Let me try and send you like 15 invites from my side. All right, let's try it from there. Try it again. <laughs> I'm going to send you like four to see if it works. <laughs> but um, But, yeah, no, I don't know what's going on with it. 
But regardless, um, let me try and is it popping up on your side, Remy? Let me know if it's uh, I'm acting a little uh, and a little funny. But um, but one of the one of the biggest things, James, is that when you're talking with him, um, just kind of pull the comparables of the uh, of the um, of the rentals there, because I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, what you can tell them is that you can do a, a single level, and we can do. Uh, I mean, you can just have it to where it's all right there. One of the biggest things that's complimentary is, and I'll wrap back around my point. Um, I don't know what's going on, Remy. It's being really bizarre. And you know, I like you up in my rooms, man. I want to be able to t- t- chat with you. Man. I love your energy too. So I'm getting a little irritated at the clubhouse. Being a little p- pissed me off a little bit. But um, but one of the biggest things for the um, student housing is actually adding in either um, short term rental in there because parents love to come and visit for you know for um, you know for the graduation. And so um, you know, one of the biggest things for that, even to add on to it, is saying, hey, look, a we have zero holding cost, pretty much zero, because of the helical piles that we use for the foundation. Um, we get those installed that day um, and have, yeah, I mean, I was sharing earlier, we can get 10 foundations and 10 units installed every 48 hours, and which is crazy. And, um, and that's where being able to add even short-term rental into the entire development. Uh, man, I'm telling you, you talk about you know, adding a whole entire, I mean, capacity to the, to the unit man or the development it's crazy you know the parents the um the traveling coaches right you know teams right um teams that are coming in opposing teams like let's just play both sides of the spectrum right i know we have our loyalty for the football teams but man if you got the units there for the other team to stay you know i mean my god bro like you talk about being having 30 units all booked out you know for the week you know and and that's another um, another crazy idea. And okay, so that's so. Hey, Delisha, did they give you issues when you were trying to come up on stage? And now, uh, Remy, I, I don't. I ain't gonna let it fly, man. I, the clubhouse is being a little butthead right today. But um, but let me know on that deletion in the chat. But um, but one of the whoa, we got Morton in the house. That is some crazy hair. But um, but one of the one of the most interesting things when it comes down to those types of developments with student housing is that where. You know, think of, think outside of like two degrees, three degrees more, because you've got the teams, you've got the parents, you've got the traveling professionals who are coming in and out for, you know, for whatever event that's going to happen that uh, for that, you know, for that month or whatever the case is. Now, especially when the games hit, oh my God, man, you talk about football, baseball, you know, volleyball, um, soccer, um, in you know, technically football, but we ain't going to go there, but because um, they play with your feet. <laughs> But one of the um, one of the biggest things for um, for that is I got a request for uh, that is so interesting. But um, but one of the one of the biggest things for um, for that type of development just kind of get creative because that's where they're thinking as well. Yeah, it's great for the students, but also too what keeps parents from attending and also too really kind of I mean not not really truly, but uh, it's a bummer um, when it comes down to students picking schools. Um, is where can um, where can we when where can we really dig in and actually combine different stuff um, to help them actually um, supplement? All right, Morton, let's see if that brings you up on stage. And oh, what the heck? Okay, I don't know, that's a bit weird. But um, but that's where you can really dig in and get creative when it comes down to uh, when it comes down to how can you incorporate not just their families, the teams and all the staff, you know, because that's part of that conversation uh, that you're going to, that you should have with them, James, is that a, the foundation's going to be laid quickly. We don't have to wait for concrete to cure um, uh, for that I means for the, uh, for the units themselves, maybe for, you know, for like sidewalks and driveways and all that kind of stuff, depending on what you do. But asphalt, I mean, asphalt can be poured down, uh, but also two sidewalks at a, at a minimal, um, after the units are there, you know, and that's, you know, give that maybe a week or two to, to cure and just coordinate that logistically um, with the development. And then that way it's, you know, you know, within a month and a half, you're done. And of course, asphalt, you know, concrete shortage and all that kind of stuff that's happening right now. You kind of backlog some stuff. All right, Raymond, let's see if this works now. All right. I accepted it and should bring you up on stage, man. Um, double check, Remy, your uh, the the most recent app that you have um, uh, downloaded on your phone. See if it's the uh, if it needs an update as well. If it, for the problem persists, so I brought Morton and um, the Delisha up on stage with no problems. So I'm not sure what's going on, brother. But um, and yeah, James came up too. So I don't know. That's weird. So give it a shot, man. See if the uh, apps on the most recent update. It's probably what it is. 
but um but yeah guys it's it's really neat you know there's so many things and that you can incorporate that to uh, into that development james and so just bring that you know bring the foundation topic um to there and then also to expand it and say hey look we're going to be also having housing for the parents and the teams that's all you got to say and then watch their eyes go just big as saucers i mean seriously so hopefully that helped james let me know if um, did that kind of did i hit the nail on the head for you yes um thank you thank you uh Definitely, I will. Gosh, gosh, man. For the college, for areas that have multiple colleges, it'd be good too for family and friends weekends. Um, they don't usually run on the same, but I was just listening. And that would be a good time to offer that other than hotels as well. Oh, gosh, yeah. That is so true. Um, that is so weird, Remy. I'm not. I'm doing everything I can, man. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I guess uh, Clubhouse doesn't want us to be great this morning. I have no idea what's going on, man. <laughs> but really quick room reset, guys. We're talking about um, tiny homes and having just practically zero holding costs when it comes to foundations and being able to um, do, be able to build out quick development. And what's unique is I was talking to a guy who does boutique hotels um, earlier uh, this past week, and it's actually really neat because. Um, when it comes down to um, being able to be able to create, you know, really good, I mean, amazing looking different luxury stays at a fast pace. Um, and that's what's so wild is that when it comes down to when it comes down to having a, a unique uh, stay, you know, where I got a business partner, we're uh, putting together trucker stays. <sighs> and um, please don't let your brain split in half on that because um, truckers need love and too, right? And in a you know, professional way, not the way that probably stereotypical and just came to mind. But um, <laughs> so, y'all forgive my crash sarcasm, and I am country as it gets. But um, but when it comes down to um, when it comes down to just the different demographics, so we're building out a premium stay. And man, I mean, those are those are going to be uh, definitely way more expensive uh, than a sixty five thousand dollars standard unit. Uh, but when it comes down to the uh, the financing and the funding on that, man, he talked about, I mean, oh, my goodness gracious, it is going to be crazy. Um, but it's, you know, when you're able to think backwards, right, think backwards, you know, we all, we all have a business, right? We all, you know, think about who is our customer avatar. We all think about who are we going to serve. It's like, say, for instance, you know, for a landscaping company, right? If you're going to do flower bed installations, you know, think about who you're like, what you're going to offer. Um, and then also work backwards on who would best that would serve. Right. And, and so that way, you know, exactly who's going to be able to have the means to pay for it um, and be able to book that out, you know? And, and I mean, shoot, we've got on this trucker state, we've pre-sold 3 million of the $35 million development. And, and that's, what's so crazy about it. So um, anyways, I was going to say, I said a room reset went on a rabbit trail, but um, the guys were talking about affordable housing, how we can uh, do crazy amounts of, Crazy cool uh, amounts of development and just different arenas and lanes. So with that being said, uh, Delisha, Morton, James, if you can go ahead on mic, uh, Delisha first, Morton second, James third. Just introduce yourself to the room. Um, if you just know that I am a professional troll, so if you go down that route, I'll go tit for tat for you, and you'll be booted on out. So go ahead, uh, Delisha, go ahead and uh, on mic, introduce yourself, and we'll go ahead and go uh, straight to Morton and James. Good morning. Well, is it good morning? This thing's 12 o'clock. So good afternoon. So my name is Delicia. I live in Tampa. I'm a short term rental operator. And my question is this. So what is the true definition of a tiny home? Because I've been I see the container homes and I see like the built tiny homes. But then you have a lot of people now that take those sheds that you go to a place that says like we sell sheds and it's pretty big and they'll put walls up. Um, they'll put walls and installation and the floors and the whole nine and then they'll say that's a tiny home and I'm like well I guess but is that really a tiny home or is it like a bootleg tiny home or does it tiny definitely home matter as long as definitely it's tiny? Oh, yeah, no, just definitely get a rig, that's for sure. And those actually aren't considered that. But really quick, though, for conservation of time, let's go ahead and um, just do the introductions first, and then we'll, we'll circle back around to your questions really quick. Uh, so, Delisha, we'll bookmark that. But I want to, if you can, introduce yourself. And then, uh, Morton, if you can introduce yourself, just 30 second intro. And then that way we'll uh, boomerang back to the questions because I, I definitely want to dig into that because that is a, Delisha, that's a question I have to, uh, I have to address almost weekly. <laughs> But Adelisha, if you can, just go ahead and uh, reintroduce yourself, and then we'll bounce it over to Morton really quick, and then James. Oh, okay. So my name is Delicia. I live in Tampa, Florida, and I am a short-term rental operator. 
Um, educator as well, but I'm kind of going more into the space of doing real estate investing now because I hate arbitrage now. So that's it. Morton, over to you, my good sir. Hello, guys and girls. I, I just uh, see the title in the room, so I think I thought I just needed to jump in and check out what this was. I'm from Norway, and I uh, think I had the biggest uh, factory producing uh, module houses and uh, tiny houses here in Norway for a few years ago. I was absolutely the first, and I also have developed uh, some projects with uh, tiny houses with about uh, quite many uh, tiny houses in the spot. So I was curious about the rooms. So that's why I'm here, actually. Well, good to have you here, man. And definitely um, yeah, definitely being across the pond as well, man. That's going to we can definitely dig into some really cool conversations there. James, over to you, my good sir. All right, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. I think I know who the James is. is. Oh. oh, yeah, what's going on, Jeremy? Hey, what's up, big dog? Go ahead and introduce Not yourself, much, man. my good sir. Uh, my name is James Jackson, real estate investor, short-term rental operator, um, and company builder, doing some cool stuff with Jeremy, with a lot of his projects. He's a part of a company that we're building now, and just excited to be in the room. And you guys, the one I was the uh, the company I was telling you guys about um, that we're um, where I'm gonna be a part owner. Uh, well, I am part owner in that, and now with that is James is my counterpart on that. And so um, James, when I was telling you about in Arkansas, Ryan is right here on stage. And so, and also too, uh, there's quite a few different things we've been uh, we've been discussing here. I'm pretty sure you've been uh, tuning in, man. And um, you guys, Block Company is the building company that um, that is the, by default the one that has the the background in emergency response and, and disaster relief. And you talk about being able to keep up when the crap hits the fan. This is the team. And so, um, Delisha, really quick to kind of boomerang back over to your question: the sheds that are get repurposed into that, like say the shells of like the Home Depot shells and a bunch of that stuff. Um, a, the biggest trade off um, for for that is um, for they're not hurricane proof. They're more than likely stick builds usually. Um, and then what happens is they're absolutely uh, jerry rigged, as we like to say it. You know, my the duct tape together because a hurricane hits that bad boy, it is gone. Like I mean, just like it's like a fart in the wind. But part of the uh, part of the biggest thing is too is that a lot of county ordinances will not permit those to be dwelling units, like the D uh, DMV area, and, um, and so they can't be a repurposed shed into a dwelling unit. Some county ordinances will allow that, but at the end of the day, they will not that as the actual dwelling unit they won't even allow some utilities to go to it in some areas but the biggest thing is the time you have to put the insulation in you have to do the studs you got to do whole nine the sheetrock all that stuff some people are cool with it but for me i like to pay for it and then just get it out and be done i mean gone i, I mean straight out the window and be able to because at the end of the day i'm gonna uh, a lot of folks love to have that that, that pride factor of that saying i did it but at the end of the day i like to have that pride factor of saying i serve because at the end of the day that's where uh, that's where when it comes down to repurposing those sheds or anything like that that a lot of folks are like oh i can get it i can get a shed from home depot or lowe's and that's cool and all um but also too it's gonna take you three or four months to even get you know things done right and two you have to go through inspection the inspection part sucks Oh my gosh, it sucks so bad because appraisers and, um, and um, inspectors, man, feel like they're gods right now um, since COVID. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times they will not. Um, they will not approve it or you have to go back and do some really dumb stuff, some really petty things almost. And, and a lot of that can um, a lot of that can really result into delays and making it darn near impossible for it to be profitable to a degree unless they have that, that those means uh, to be able to make it worth it because my my biggest thing is you know if we're putting it in the backyard right like a mother-in-law suite like how are you going to counterbalance that you know that say you know after after you actually do those the customizations to it personally how are you going to balance that out with rent roll right or how are you going to write that off or like whatever like whatever the case is because even if they buy it at 10 maybe 12 grand or whatever 
they're going to put, you know, probably, you know, five, eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars into it, not including their time and their labor. So, like, a lot of times people don't account for that. They only account for material. But if you're a contractor, I mean, that's your job, right? Take yeah. how much you know, how much you get paid per hour. You're putting that time into it. And that's the yeah. amount that you're losing and doing it yourself because no one else is going to pay you to do that. And that's the that's the cost that's in uh, that really pushes it up. I mean, some folks get paid you know forty five to seventy five dollars an hour, hundred dollars an hour uh, to do that kind of stuff. And you know, uh, well, not that kind of stuff, but just in their jobs in general. So you got to think about really realistically what kind of cost are you putting into that to actually develop it and and actually grow it, right? And that's where. At the end of the day, you know, it's it's cool, but I mean, it sounds fantastic. It makes for great Pinterest content, but at the end of the day, how are you how are you having it pay for yourself? Because how, how are you having it pay for itself? Because at the end of the day, that's the real number that matters. Yeah, you know, because a lot of a lot of times, folks are like, yeah, I get it for lesser than whatever, but okay, great. Have you made have you broke even on it? Have you made money from it? But more than likely, nine times out of ten, of them, no. Unless they have a crew or like a contracting crew that's in place to do yeah. that, but that's definitely not the um, the DIY um, route. More than likely, most people take with it. Delisha, you still there? Delisha, don't make me feel like an uh, episode of Castaway where I'm screaming Wilson. But uh, do do. I just want to make sure you guys saw you on mic. Do you want to, uh, to add to that? No, I did not mic. I had a phone call come in. Oh, no worries. Delish, you there? Yeah, my I don't know what's clubhouse is like not doing what it's supposed to do. So are tiny homes ever zoned residential? Because just from the little research I've done, I'm sure I'm not completely correct. Most people here in Tampa that do tiny homes or even build a tiny home community, they do it on um lots that are zoned um for mobile homes and then they just put the wheels under the tiny home so it qualifies for a mobile home and they leave it as is i've never seen the standalone tiny home because i've assumed that maybe you know it's true that it has to be on a on a lot that's zone um what the heck for a mobile home so am i right or wrong um you're you're both and so with that though um so again it goes back to county ordinances right and it goes back to what is that plot zone for you know, um, the, in Florida, Florida is a different animal. So there's a um, there's a space and um, there's a plot in Florida right now. That we're actually doing the renderings and planning for. You know, James, we're we'll bounce. I'm gonna bounce that over to the team this coming week once we finalize everything. But um, that that whole plot, that whole plot and property, we're putting it on a slab. And so with it, I believe it's zoned residential or maybe zoned commercial. So we're going to do it as a motel. Uh, but that's where, when it comes down to residential zoning in Florida, you have, we definitely, it's a different animal. And so we have to look at what is the square footage minimum, right? And so that's where we look at what can be, what, what is the square footage minimum for this plot for a permanent dwelling? Because with a, if we're doing a permanent dwelling as a residential, then there's going to be like if it's a single family home, right? If we yeah. definitely, um, you know, if it's going to be like, you know, if we're going for like the minimal amount of square footage, it may be 450, it may be 600 square foot, um, depending on that county in Florida. Because I'm, I'm working on stuff all the way from uh, like Miami to Fort Pierce and uh, different areas. And so um, they all have their different restrictions and their different requirements that would be deemed as a tiny home yeah mobile home like you know like having a container home on wheels is going to be rv asset uh class or even to mobile uh mobile home sorry container home i, I just said mobile home thing as a container home uh, but the container home on wheels is going to be yeah. uh, it's really good for rv asset classes for campgrounds but also to for mobile home parks and that's what's so interesting is that when it comes down to the residential side of it we have to look at like here's the rendering here's the architectural overlay and also too you know there's some ways where we can do a modular um, modular to bypass uh, modular status with that unit up to bypass engineering and so because a lot of times with the residential you know, there's an inspection process right and then also too making sure that it, you know with the utilities they put uh, with the plumbing with the sewage or the septic or city, city sewage uh, and you know, more than likely, Florida is going to be you know, city water. Um, so we're just going to be a set of well water like up in the north. But that's where it gets pretty interesting because with uh, because we have relationships in Florida right now that we're not only uh, that we have, but also that we're working to improve. And so, um, and that's where James and I we were always talking about this kind of stuff behind the scenes because at the end of the day. We want to see people helped. We don't want them to have you know go without homes because you know the county's just being a butthead, right? 
And so that's where we go through and look at, you know, look at the weird, um, the weird restrictions and weird requirements because every, every county and every city is their own version of Gotham. <laughs> and, and that's where uh, we look at what is the square footage minimums and requirements for that side of it? What is the foundation requirements for that residential uh, home? And then that's where we can look at, based on that square footage, we can configure units to go up to, oh my gosh, up to 1,500 square foot, 2,000 square foot. It wouldn't be a tiny home at that point. It would just be a single family residence made out of containers as the walls and the infrastructure. So that way it's a different material structure is what that is. And that's part of, uh, part of what Rob was talking about um, you know, the other uh, when he was in here earlier. Is that with the container home in those neighborhoods? That's where we look at with those ordinances. I mean, even too, like we've got a project up in Illinois that we're working on closing right now uh, uh, for an RV park across the road. He yeah. owns the land and he wants to do single family homes, you know? And, and that's where, you know, commercial is definitely the, the easiest route with that with the least amount of resistance with it. But based on those county ordinances and what they will approve, that's where we go to them, like to the municipality and say, hey, look, here's the business plan, here's the overlay, here's the model. Um, and also, too, we're going to be yeah. um, bringing in some really cool tour, uh, tour ability to help the municipality see, because a lot of municipalities are still very yeah. analog. <clears throat> and so helping them see yeah. it from ground up and then getting that stamp of approval, then that's where yeah. you know, all, it's all downhill from there. So it really goes back on the square footage minimums, uh, foundation requirements, um, and utilities on it. Which foundation wise, we can, you know, the hel hel helical piles. I mean, that's just, that just makes things so much easier too. And there, there are also too, there's a lot of trade off with that as well, as far as like security, because those are things that are strong, stronger than the ox. Does that help kind of answer your question, Alicia? Yes. So you would say that it's maybe easier to get a um previous mobile home move all the mobile homes out and then just put like a bunch of container homes that were on or on top of the little slots that were um where mobile homes already existed versus going to buy a big piece of land and then having to drop the plans and submit it to the city and see if they're going to approve it for a bunch of the different individual residential tiny homes I love your kids, but um, with I mean, it's definitely gonna have a, a path of least resistance for sure. Yeah, and that's the NAB. I mean, it really just you know, it's not a matter of like what's better. Um, honestly, it's a matter of like what's the what's gonna be the fastest path, like where the where Florida is at right now. Uh, because some folks may want to just you know buy that, hold it, get it, you know, hang out for a little bit because their cash out refi play may be freaking amazing. Um, yeah, James, go ahead. Yeah, and I and I think a lot of investors in your area, they are bypassing local codes for speed. A lot of times when you're buying these container homes and these tiny homes, you're trying to get your product out in the market, the short-term rental market, as fast as you can. Um, I'm dealing with a process where I'm trying to get container homes approved in my city that has never really even done modular homes. And I've been working on the process for three months, and I probably got another three to five months just to get the full approval. So a lot of people are putting these on wheels, on, on helical pile foundations, or just creative foundations, just to be able to get their product out quickly. Um, yes, you could go the traditional route, get a plan, get a plot of land, and really dig and do everything. But you know, it may take you a year or more to get it fully approved um, because in Birmingham, you know, you have to start at the neighborhood association level and then work up to the city, the county. I mean, that takes a long time to, to get done. So. so I just put in the chat, it's a uh, Carter. Silence. So there's a place here. It's called the escape. I think it's the escape community. It's in Finona, So it's kind of like right out on the outskirts of Tampa. They pretty much did what I'm talking about. They went and got some land, I believe it was already zoned mobile home, and then they just put a bunch of little tiny homes on there and they put wheels under it so it could be, you know, considered tiny homes. And they're so pretty. So he's selling them as houses. I don't know if you can cash out refi on a tiny home. If you can, that's cool. But it's a really cool community and I wanted to duplicate that because it's so cute. And housing here is an issue. A lot of people are moving out of Tampa to like Spring Hill, Riverview, Apollo Beach because it's, un it's becoming unaffordable to live here. Like a lot of families are downsizing from their houses or apartments 
to mobile homes because they can't afford the rent. Well, and that's part of it too, is that with, you know, um, even, even if you get like, say for instance, you buy, you know, a residential plot of land, you can get it rezoned, you know, easily. But the biggest thing is that, yeah, absolutely. You know, finding, um, finding land that's zoned for, you know, for mobile home park, uh, for campgrounds, for RV parks, all of that jazz, easily putting them on wheels. I mean, shoot, our, um, our model, actually the one that we built out that has like the four bedroom loft area in it, that's you know, the typical one, but a lot of people like that. Um, just because they can have that for their kids and be able to, to have that very minimalistic, you know, luxury minimalism, big, 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 big thing happening right now, you know, because people are downsizing and they want to invest into their lifestyle, you know, and that's where, you know, being able to uh, put them on wheels and be able to have that, or even, I mean, dude, even cinder blocks, my gosh, I mean, it's so simple. And that's where uh, being able to have them out there, I'm actually pulling up the site really quick. But uh, I need to be able to spell it right, though. Um, there we go. Escape Tampa, not the escape. But um, I don't ever think about the escape room. But that's where, when you're able to, when you're able to find the easiest way, the easiest route. Um, oh yeah, so that's different. He's he put that on. Um, yeah, so those don't look like they're on. Are they on wheels? It looks like there's a deck in front of it, um, covering up the wheels. That's usually what we do. Any kind of RV, um, RV asset that we have, uh, we always make sure that people have it to where um, they can go out and um, and purchase them, but have a, a skirt around it. You know, so it covers up the wheels. Easy to move and simple to do. And yep, he's got storage on there too. And that's part of it. You know, having a office on there as well. And that's where even too, like we've uh, we've got that 30 unit developments happening over in uh, Texas. And being able to have it to where um, you have a front office with that, have some self storage on there as well. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, I mean, you can put them on wheels and have them as a residence um, on there. It wouldn't be a single family home, though. It'd be a mobile home residence. So that's the, I think that's the biggest, uh, biggest uh, misnomer there is that having them as a uh, mobile home residence. Um, that absolutely can be done, and that's a very, very quick thing to to execute. We we were doing them at you know what like James, I think what was it like eighty? No, that was that was with the solar um, solar attachment to it. And that's actually one of the things we added on there, um, having a solar uh, capability added onto it. So with a switch, just in case the power goes out, right? And um, those are like eighty eight k, you know, in and out, be done, and be able to have them out on the market. Very simple to do while you're yeah you know, like that three D rendering has. Website or coming soon, literally like that. But even to one up it, uh, to be able to have it to where, um, be able to have it to where he's a, where you're able to have a like a, an animated 4D rendering. So that way it makes it even that much more visual, and even too to be able to book out even faster because he's got a raised roof on some of them, and we can make that easily and have that delivered in a simple time. I mean, just you know, land on site really quickly as well. Yeah, these are beautiful, and that's something that can be done so simple too. Yeah, it looks like yeah he had those built. Um, yeah, some of them are on wheels, and I see the um, let's see yeah, he's got the units outside. So yeah, he has a deck on the front of them, and that's it. That's easily we actually have a uh, a project we're sending out where we can have the deck attached to it, um, so that way it folds up on delivery, folds down when it's there, and uh, be able to um, be able to have that as an adjustment as well. Yeah, these are great. And that's exactly yeah. You know, yep, I see the trailer right there on the back with the uh, air conditioning unit and the, um, and the electrical. Uh, so yeah, these are easily to be done. And these are some of, the, uh, some of the projects that we have going on right now in some other states, and be able to make a very, very easy, uh, easy solution. And uh, yeah, it's very quick and easy. That's simple to do. So, are those basic containers with, I guess, an extra build on the outside, like a shell on the outside, to make it look the way it does? Well, those look like they're built a little bit differently. Those look like stick builds on a um, on a trailer. But what we can do as far as the containers, we can add, add ship lap to the outside and be able to have it to where it doesn't look containery. So that way it has a nice industrial farmhouse look like this does. Ship lap or tongue and groove, whichever, whichever you want to do. And uh, to answer Gina's question in the chat, um, Let's see. Yeah, so eighty-eight thousand was the uh, with the solar attachment to it. Uh, James, I think what was it? The difference was like seventy-five or so, roughly, without it. Yeah, without the solar, it was like seventy. It was actually like seventy-two, seventy-three. Yeah, I think it was with the trailer is what it bumped it up to like eighty-eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was um, yeah, seventy three with the solar, and then it was um, with the trailer because we we make sure that whenever we're having it on a trailer, we'll actually make sure that you purchase it separately, so that way it's the it's titled in your name, so that because that title transfer process is a, can be a nightmare at times. Um, so if we take off the solar portion of it, it was right around seventy five, seventy eight ish or so, because those trailers are like thirteen k each or so, roughly. And James, correct me wherever I'm wrong on that. No, I, I mean, have... yeah, absolutely right. I mean, you, you spot on with those numbers. Okay, okay. I was totally guessing off the mouth of memory. And right now my memory is kind of like, Arr. but <laughs> but Alicia, does that help answer your question though? As far as like the flexibility with it? Oh, yes, two more questions. So is All the right. real estate market inflating the prices on tiny homes or is the demand in itself within that industry kind of just based off of the man the demand in that industry and then two if a person is wanting to get started let's say for example well, hold, somebody on, hold, on. What, hold on one question at a time uh my brain can only process one at a time right now um so when you said inflating the price based on like what? is the real estate market because there's a there is a lack of housing does that affect the tiny home prices or does it have nothing to do with oh god no no we we actually go against it that's what makes it so appealing Really? Yeah, because all of our all of our stuff comes with electric plumbing, all of it ready to go. So that way, when it arrives on site, you can plug it in like a Febreze uh, air freshener. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> Wait, so how does it work with the with the um the sewer? Oh, so that's where it was earlier. We talked about um, city or our city's um, sewage, or um, you do a septic tank. And I guess like a like a like a garbage truck or a septic, like whatever comes every now and then. Yep, poop truck. Yep, good old poop truck comes on in, just on rotation. You should call, we should, James, we should start a sewage company called the Pooper Scooper. That's disgusting, but, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. <laughs> so if a person wanted to build out a tiny home community here, what would your advice be? Where do you start? And are you going to a lender to get some type of is there some special financing or loans that are out there for stuff like this like where are you starting well i mean starting with a link up above and um book a time with me uh, but no we go through we go through all that you know working backwards if it's going to be classified as a mobile home park um lending away absolutely we've got those people in place whether private or retail money all of that covered because that's the biggest thing like when it comes to the tiny home plug llc like it's completely vertically integrated um, all the way to tiny home funding, and that's where with like because James, you know, that's, he's uh, the other part of the team on the building side of it. That's where we really, really work to make sure you get the term rates that you're wanting. Also, too, with the lender, that's not going to be a you know a jacked hard on uh, stuff, and then they actually they actually understand the uh, development because not every lender is built the same. That is a fact. And so you know, we work backwards with that. And that's what I was saying earlier is that with your business model, the renderings, um, getting the approvals, the engineering, all that stuff goes into play and in getting better approval odds for the lenders, um, you know, whomever it is. If it's, you know, if it's you know, somebody that's coming in, a silent partner to fund that whole deal, um, they give you terms on that. Or if we go through a problem, um, oh, hang on, we got to make sure she just got a phone call. But um, but that's where we go through and make sure we have everything covered on that. At least you there. Just make sure that, that you're catching this. Delisha, Delisha. <clears throat> if I could touch on the lending side from what my experience is too, Jeremy. Yeah, hang on one second. I'm gonna make sure she got that though. She uh, that way, yeah. had a call come in, Jeremy. That's what that yeah, I know. Yeah, I just want to make sure she caught that, but um, but it'll be on the replays too. But uh, but yeah, going back into all of that, making sure that, that when we have all those right pieces in place, that's where we go through and make sure that we have that to present to the right lender. Um, so, but James, go ahead and jump in, then we'll bounce over to Ryan real quick. No, I don't. I don't have anything. So, Ryan, you can go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Brian. Uh, I was just gonna say um, the uh, what I've noticed over the past few years of being in the lending space and helping investors. Um, particularly in the real estate investment field. It's uh, tiny home um, and, and dealing with this concept with storage containers is not a readily accepted um, situation yet. So it's good to know, Jeremy, that you have the plug for that because um, as we've talked before, I know for a fact that in the next 
10 years, this is going to be more commonplace. And so to get ahead of it and really put in the plug for affordable housing and, and being creative with the solution, I think is, is beneficial for all that are listening. Amen to that, man. And that's, um, and that's what's so, and that was the biggest hindrance with a lot of projects, you know, over the past, you know, six months. And that's where I was like, you know what, if, you know, if, uh, if folks aren't going to do it, then I am. And I'm going to make sure that we have every single step ordered in place. So that way, when we're starting down a path, we're not going to uh, go face plant straight into a dead end. Because that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I like my teeth and the ones that I have. And I don't like losing them, especially if I'm um, like, it's, you know, it's like that guy who's going on a pogo stick. He's like, I'm going to go higher. And whoom right there on the driveway and it's like man and that's the that's the suckiest part about it is that where you know being able to you know being able to have you know not just you know for that the initial build but also too um you know like see that third that uh, trucker stay man that's going to be a 300 unit development and that's going to build into 150 different builds double stack triple stack you name it but um but that's where it's like man we've <laughs> We definitely have the right people in place to make sure that we, you know, chop at the bits and go through that. And even too, it's even crazier is that with, um, you know, there's so many unique plays with it too. You know, opening it up for private investors, plot by plot, uh, plot by plot. Sorry, my voice cracked. But plot by plot to be able to say, hey, look, we're going to be able to knock this out and say, hey, look, we're going to be able to even too down the road refinance on different things that are modular, that are, you know, that are that are uh, mobile home assets etc and see where can we bring it into specific categories that are already available but also too with lenders that are you know that are going to take the risk on it and do it because it is fairly fresh and be able to yeah you know, look with these numbers i'm going to make sure that you freaking keep, I'm gonna keep your feet to the fire because at the end of the day if we're doing a balloon payment on 30 or plus more units man we're gonna make sure you're gonna hit your payments and be sustainable because at the end of the day i'm not about to have my, you know, my name dragged through the mud on stuff either i'm gonna make sure that you've got every single nook and cranny covered because at the end of the day you have got to have a good game plan in place and a business plan and that's one of the biggest things these lenders are looking for and that's part of why it's so important to have Every everything's thought through, so that way you're not having to, you know, you know, face plan at the end of the day because the lender's going to come back and say, "Well, I don't know about all this, man. There's no systems in place. You don't have a marketing plan in place. Who are you actually going to serve? What's the game plan for the first 90 days? How are you going to make your payments? Because, you know, at the end, and right, that's what we're talking about—the holding costs. You know, you still, I mean, the banks still want their money. The lenders still want their money, even though you're not making it. And so, being able to counterbalance that with letters of intent, with you know pre-booking revenue, with you know getting contracts together, all of this stuff happens so fast that where it's like certain piece of land on those dead it. and where you want to be able to, uh, where you want to be able to, um, you know, be able to have all that in place because who cares if you have a concept, you know, no one's going to give you money if you don't have your next steps lined out. Period. Flat out period. That's a fact. Well stated. Man, all gas, no brakes, man. And that's where, um, and that's where, oh, and also, Ryan, side note, the guy I was telling you about that was, uh, that was uh, from Arkansas. Not Yeah, Ar from Arkansas. Uh, that's James right here. Uh, James, you uh, can't remember. I told him not to quote me on it, but what part of Arkansas did you say you went to school at? I can't remember. Yeah, so if you're from Arkansas, I went to Henderson, Henderson State, which isn't too far from Camden at all. Um, I think it's about 40, 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm a really – through and true. Nice. Yeah, um, it's a pretty interesting opportunity um, that was sourced. Um, I've got um, I've got some people that are pretty connected into the city there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeremy had some conversations offline. And so yesterday we had a very productive meeting with um, uh, with with them. And I think, uh, you know, right now we're, we're we're starting the process. So it'll be cool to get integrated and meet you, James. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I I probably would love to get down there too. I'm actually planning on going to the, I don't know how familiar you are with the Battle of the Ravine, um, but I plan on getting out that way around in the November to go to that game. Mm -hmm. So I may be able to take a trip down to Cam, Cam, Camden and uh, check the site out at least. Nice. I think that would be pretty. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. I'm actually, uh, I'm from Colorado and then I moved to Northwest Arkansas. Um, I moved out of that inflationary market. Um, you know, uh, again, going back to my sole focus being making people better than when you find them. Um, yes. there's a lot of things that are going on, 
in Colorado that um, I don't agree with. And so um, our family moved to basically uh, really get down to the roots, the roots and start focusing in Arkansas and building out. Um, I primarily invest in Arkansas, Iowa, really the Midwest. Um, that's primarily where we've been focusing our investment acquisition strategies. But, um, you know, going back to kind of how Jeremy, Jeremy and I met, um, we had a great conversation. I think Donaji Barnes was in that room too, but um, we had a great conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, just I'm excited to see what the future holds. So, yep. Absolutely. Now, what part of North, North Arkansas are you in? So I'm in the cluster of cities up there in the top corner. So you've got Bentonville, Lowell, um, Centerton. You've got Fayetteville up in that top corner. Um, okay. Yeah. So we we recently just bought a bought a property. Uh, you know, which is obviously we're house hacking, like most investors are doing. There, we're house hacking, turning a rental in a couple of years, but it's uh, located in Lowell. Um, so that's that's where we're at. Okay. Pretty, that's awesome. Yeah, I actually was up in Mittenville last year for uh, a benefit event. My former quarterback coach, he works with Walmart, and he has a really big golf tournament every year for leukemia benefits. So okay. I, I'm up that way every single year. So You always got to think time, Walmart when you talk Bentonville. You always, man, you have to. You have right? to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so, and, and a funny story, man. He actually was – the best quarterback Benville ever had. And of course, when you got the Waltons looking at you from that perspective, they're going to treat you like family. So he got in with them and was able to do some, some pretty cool stuff with them uh, pretty quick. So. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Up here uh, in Bentonville, they actually have a Walmart museum. What about a Tarjay museum? Right. <laughs> You know, funny story real quick, uh, not to get off topic, but um, I was uh, I was speaking to a couple people up here, um, you know, with boots on the ground that we built here, uh, and they have some pretty deep roots um, with uh, what's going on in the kind of the direction that Northwest Arkansas is heading. But uh, one of the one of the stories uh, is uh, there was uh, there was kind of a development um, that was being built where there was a bunch of Costco that bought land. And uh, Walmart caught word of it and basically offered them a price that they couldn't refuse. And during the build, when one of the Costco's was, was developed, uh, they demolished it and then made it a flat land. Is it still flat right now? Uh, I'm not sure on the exact location, but it just goes to show, I mean, like you said, I mean, you know, this is Walmart country around here and they won't accept any of you Costco's. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm shocked they're still letting Kroger be a thing down there myself. Yeah, for sure. Well, guys, I am going to be uh, closing this room out here in a couple minutes, man. This has been a really solid, solid time to hang out with you guys. And I um, appreciate everyone contributing because, man, this is, this is what these rooms are all about, man. Just having fun and just, you know, to get to know each other because, there are so many ways to where we can really, um, where we can really team up, collaborate, because that's what it's all about: is collaborating on this mission of affordable housing, and um, you know, being able to just create lodging. Period. And and that's where, you know, with my, you know, the mission that we've got, man, it's just it's so big that we can't do it on our own. And man, I am just uh, just grateful that everyone came in today. And, you know, and that's where um, I just, I enjoy, I just enjoy the conversation. And so I just, again, appreciate y'all coming in, hanging out with me this morning on a random Saturday morning with no plans whatsoever. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we can just change lives. And um, if you guys haven't hit the link at the top of the room yet, do so. So that way we can go ahead and just check all the boxes, you know, no big deal whatsoever. As far as, you know, there's no obligation to it, just to check off the boxes for an ideal unit you may have in mind. And then that way we can go ahead and get that conversation started and make the most of our time on a call because I want to, uh, I want to be able to help equip you, but also too to help be able to arm you for what is to be expected, and that way you don't step into any unknown bear traps. So, guys, I appreciate y'all coming in again, and uh, man, I just I can't wait to uh, to see what happens. And so, um, again, I appreciate y'all, and I will catch y'all here soon.